Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking to you about models and models is a way of tying a database table to a file so then we could simply reference the database table just by calling the model class and we could say like uh, customer find with an ID of one and then it will automatically retrieve the customer with an ID of one from the database and give us an object back that we can use. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and show you how to use models. From the last video, we generated a new model called customer. So if we go back into the code, we now have this new file called customer.php, and this is our model. So since the name of the model is customer, by default it will look for a table in the database called customers. We could also change this by, we could say, public table equals, and we could say, customer if we wanted the table name to be customer instead. And actually this instead of public this is going to be protected. So that's how you would define the table name if it was customer instead of customers. But let's go ahead and just remove this and let's create a new table called customers. So I am using SQL Pro so I'm going to go ahead and open up SQL Pro and first I just need to create a new database. So I'm just going to create a new database and just call this application. And then inside of my application, I need to bind the database to my app. So this is inside of our root.env file. So if you click on the .env, this is where a lot of our environment configuration is going to live. So this is where we will define our database credentials. So we have database host, and my host is actually just going to be localhost. And then the database name is going to be application. And in my case, the username and password are just both going to be root. So just like that, I have tied my database to my application. So let's go ahead and create our customers table. So I'm just going to create a new table and just call this customers. And then it's going to be a pretty simple table. I'm just gonna have an ID, and then I'm also going to have a name and just give this a varchar. We'll just say 50. And then I'm just gonna manually create two customers. So we'll just say Tony, and Bob. So let's go ahead and save that and let's go back to our application and let's go into our web routes file. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove a lot of these current routes that we have in here from the previous videos and I'm just going to create a new route and say customer. And then inside of here I want to get let's say the very first customer. So I'm going to create a new variable and then we see that that equals app slash customer. And I'm just going to say first. So get me the very first result of app customer. And the reason why I'm calling app slash customer instead of just customer is because if I look inside of this customer model, we do have a namespace of app. So we need to refer to it as app slash customer. So let me go ahead and echo out the customer name. And let me go back to my application, localhost 8000 slash customer. And now you can see that localhost 8000 slash customer is returning Tony because that is the very first result in our database. So let's then go ahead and say we just want to find the customer with an ID of one. And then we go back and reload. We're going to get the same result because Tony has an ID of one. But let's say that we change that to app customer with an ID of two. Let's reload that and now we get Bob because as we can see inside of the database, Bob has an ID of two. So now let's say maybe we wanted to pass in a parameter for this route. So we wanted customer and then slash ID. So maybe we just wanted to find the customer by the ID and we wanted to pass the ID inside of the route. So then we could just say ID and ID right here. So we're saying find the customer with an ID that has been passed in from the route. So we could say customer slash one, and sure enough, that's going to be Tony. We could say customer slash two, and then sure enough, that is going to be Bob. So that's really great. We can just say app customer find and pass it an ID. And using the models that Theravel provides for us, it makes interacting with our database uh, so much easier and so much fun. So let me go ahead and show you another function that we can use with our models.
So let's say we want to create a new route and just call this customer name. And what I'm going to do is just get customer and I'm going to say app customer and I'm just going to say where name is equal to Tony. And I want to get the first occurrence. And usually this probably wouldn't be a good case because there could be multiple names with Tony, but let's say that it's like an email and that's unique. You could say where email equals and this email address. But let's go ahead and just echo out this customer ID. So if I go and go back here, go to customer name, then sure enough, Tony has an ID of one. If I were to then change this to Bob and reload, now we get an ID of two. So you can see we have this uh, find function that we can use to find the specific ID. We can use a where where we can make sure that a condition is met. And using Laravel models and Eloquent, it allows us a ton of these functions that we can use to easily retrieve data from our database. I'd recommend checking out the Laravel documentation and checking out the Eloquent section, and it will show you how to use all of these functions in depth. Uh, but that's it for this video. We just wanted to show you how you can use models to interact with data from your database and uh, how much more easier and fun that it makes building your application. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this Laravel Basics video. Uh, Laravel is a really cool framework that allows us to build these really cool applications. And one of those applications that I have built is the Dev Dojo. So if you check out devdojo.com, it's a learning resource for all things web development, including Laravel. I've just added a new section which includes ebooks that you can download. And uh, it's just a whole bunch of resources for you to get better at web development. So thanks again for checking out this video, and I hope you go over to the devdojo.com and check it out.